In this video, we're going to get started using Unity's Visual Effects Graph. This is a new particle system that is super fast, which allows you to have an insane amount of particles. It's also node-based, so it's very easy to create some awesome effects. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so here let's look at the visual effects graph. First of all, we're going to see what it is, then we're going to play around with it, and in the end, we're going to check out some really awesome pre-made samples. So the visual effects graph is a particle system in Unity. It allows you to make some really complex visual effects using millions of particles. It is built through a node-based interface, so it's very easy to use while also being extremely customizable. You can set up some really complex logic to make lots of really awesome, gorgeous effects. Right now, there's a spring sale happening on the Asset Store. Turns of great assets, icons, sound effects, and awesome tools at a great discount. Use them to make your game really stand out. Check it out by clicking the link in the description, and if you pick up anything through there, you'll also be helping out the channel. Now, as you might know, Unity has already had a built-in particle system for a very long time. Now, the main difference between the built-in and the visual effects graph is how one runs on the CPU and the other one runs on the GPU. So that means that the visual effects graph does not replace the built-in system, but rather they will continue to coexist side by side because each has their pros and cons. In terms of the renderer, the built-in runs on the built-in renderer, whereas the visual effects graph runs on the universal or the high-definition render pipelines. For the number of particles, the built-in supports thousands of particles, whereas the visual effects graph supports millions. The built-in runs on the CPU, so it can directly interact with the physics system, whereas the visual effects graph cannot interact directly, but it can do it with some complex methods. You can use C-sharp scripts to directly modify anything about the built-in particle system, like you can access stats for each individual particle and listen to collision events, whereas in the visual effects graph, you have some limitations since you are accessing data on the GPU, but you can access and modify exposed properties and interact with custom events. Lastly, the built-in particle system cannot read frame buffers, but the visual effects RF can. So you can see how each has its pros and cons. If you want millions of particles, use the visual effects graph, and if you want easy interaction with the physics world, then you should use the built-in particle system. All right, so now that we've seen a bunch of pros and cons, let's try playing around with it. Now, if you're already familiar with using the shader graph, then you'll very easily pick up the visual effects graph. And if you've never used either of them, then they are very easy to use. It's all node-based, so just follow the connections. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Okay, so here I am in a basic empty scene. Now, the first thing we need is to install the visual effects graph package. So we go into window in order to open up the package manager. And then in here, you scroll down until you find the visual effects package. There it is, the visual effect graph package. And then here, you just install it. Also, you have the visual effects graph samples. So import those also to your project and we'll check them out in the end. Now, the visual effects graph can run on the universal or the high definition render pipelines. So make sure you're using one of those as well. In this case, I have the universal render pipeline installed. So here in the project settings, you can see that I'm using a universal render pipeline asset. And in that asset, I'm just using a basic forward render. Okay, so with all the setup done, let's start making an effect. So over here in our project files, let's right click and we're going to create and over here, select the visual effects and let's create a new visual effect graph. Let's call this our test VFX. So here we have our effect in the project files and we can simply drag it straight onto our hierarchy. And there it is, there's our effect in our scene. So just like that, we have our effect. Now in here, one thing of note, here in the hierarchy, we do not have this exact object directly. What we do have is a game object with a visual effect component. And then this component has a field for the actual visual effect graph. So the graph and the game object are two separate things. So for example, another way of creating it is let's create a new game object. Let's go into visual effects and create a new visual effect. So over here we have a new visual effect object. And as you can see, there's nothing on it because it does not have a visual effect asset assigned. So we need to assign it. So just drag this one and there you go. Just like this, now it does work. So just keep in mind that the graph and the game object are two separate things. 
We're going to see how that is important later in the video. All right, so let's play around with our effect. Now, the first thing we do is simply double click on our test VFX graph. There you go, it opens up the visual effects graph window. And now in here, let's dock it right on the right side. All right, so just like this, we can see both the graph and the effect side by side. Now over here in the graph, you can see that it is split into various sections or as they're called, contexts. Now the logic essentially runs from top to bottom. So first our particles are spawned, then they are initialized. Afterwards, we have the update, which runs on every frame. And lastly, we have the output, which defines how the particles are rendered. So here we can see how the default effect works. So first over here on the spawn context, we set the spawn rate. So in this case, it's spawning 16 particles per second. Then on the initialize, first we assign a maximum particle capacity. So for example, up here, if I set the spawn rate super high, you can see that it's not really spawning that many particles. In order to do that, we also need to increase the capacity. So if I increase it, if there you go, now you can see a monumental amount of particles. Then over here, we also have the culling bounds. So essentially, this is a box with a specific size. And this box needs to be visible by the camera in order for the particle system to actually be rendered. Then we also have a random velocity block. So you can see how each particle is randomly moving a bit side by side. We also have a random lifetime, so particles will live between one and three seconds. Then over here on the update context, right now we're not doing anything. And then lastly, we have the output, which defines how the particle is rendered. And in this case, we're using the default particle texture. It's set to constantly face the camera. It increases its size over its lifetime and it's changing the color from transparent to white to transparent again. So here you can see that the particle does exactly that. So it spawns, it moves up, it goes from transparent onto white and back to transparent and the size increases over time. Now, as I said, all of this is totally customizable. So on each context, you can add or remove various blocks. So for example, let's select over here the update particle context, and then we can either hit the space bar or we can right click and create block. And now in here, we have all the actions that we can take inside of this context. So for something very simple, let's just add gravity. So we can use the search bar to search for gravity. And there you go. And just like that, you can already see that the particles are spawned and they start falling down. So that's how you add a block onto a context. And another thing you can do is also add nodes outside of the blocks. So click out here and either right click or press the space bar. So let's try it out with a very basic test. Now, first, let's remove the gravity. And then let's also remove the random blocks. So just like this, as you can see, we have no particles. So for the first thing, let's add a set lifetime block. So let's set it to one, which means each particle will live for exactly one second. Then let's also add a set velocity block and let's set the y to two. And yep, there you go. Now we can see each particle moving straight up. And then let's also add a set position. And this will set the starting position of each particle. And now in here, let's play around with these values rather than setting something fixed. So let's click outside of the context. In here, we press space and let's add a simple sine wave. There you go, we have our sine wave with input frequency, minimum and maximum. So we have all of our various fields. And now if you're already familiar with shade graph, then this will be extremely familiar. All we need to do is really just connect the dots. So in this case, let's expand the position so we can individually access the X, Y and Z. And over here on the output of our sine wave, let's connect that into the input of the X. So just like that, we have a sine wave being outputted onto the input for the position X. So by modifying this input, you can see that we change that. So now again, just like in Shader Graph, let's spawn a simple time node. So we get the total time. And now in here, we simply connect the total time onto the input. And there you go, just like that, we have a very nice effect. So we have our total time being inputted onto the sine wave. And then we have that sine wave going onto the set position X. So just like that, we have some very simple logic working. And just like this, you can see just how customizable this system is. So you have the various contexts running from top to bottom, and then you can apply all the logic that you want using nodes going from left to right. Now, something else you can do is expose properties. So over here, we have a button which opens up the blackboard. So you click it and you see this. And now in here, we can click on the plus icon and we can add some properties. So in this case, let's add a new float property. Let's rename this to the sine max. Let's make it a range, a range between zero and 10, and let's default it to one. 
And lastly, let's take this box in order to expose it. All right, so now here we can use it on our graph. So just drag it in there and now we can drag it onto the maximum. Yep, there you go. So by default, it's going between zero and one. So just the same. However, now if we go into our hierarchy and we select our VFX object, over here we can see the various properties. So we can see our sign max. And now if you remember a while ago, I talked about the separation between the effect graph and the actual effect object. So here is where that comes in handy. You can see that we have this nice little checkbox on the left side. This is the override checkbox. So if I don't tick it, then it's using the default value that we defined on our visual effect graph. However, we can tick this and override this with a different property. So in this case, let's make it go to three. So there you go, now that one is much wider. However, the interesting thing is that this value is being applied only for this effect object. So here in my scene, let's duplicate this visual effects object. Let's put it on the side here. So now we have two objects, both of them using the same underlying graph, but now using a property, we can make them behave differently. So that one is going very wide. And now on this one, let's override and put this one on one. So just like that, without modifying the underlying graph, we have two different effects. So using this, you can use the same graph and customize it in various ways by simply exposing some properties. Then over here on the blackboard, you can see all of the various types of properties that you can add. So for example, let's make a new gradient. Let's make this our color gradient. We're also going to expose it. And then down here, let's drag it onto our graph and we're going to connect our color gradient to the output color. So now again, we can select the right one and leave it like that one. And on the left one, let's change the gradient color. So there you go, just like that. Now we have this nice gradient with a bunch of colors and there you go, both effects are using the same underlying graph but they both look visually very different. So that's how the separation between the actual effect graph and the effect object is extremely useful. You make an underlying object, you expose some properties and then you can use it in various different ways. All right, so here we saw the basics for how the visual effects graph works. We have our various contexts. The logic goes from top to bottom and then we can add blocks on each specific context. And then outside of it, we can add some nodes going left to right to further customize the inputs for each block. So now that we know all of that, let's check out the more complex samples. Now there are actually two samples packs. The first one is the one that you downloaded straight from the package manager. And the second one you can get from GitHub. So the first one contains some simple effects and the second one contains a bunch of really awesome but more complex effects. So the first one is over here on my project files. So we'll just expand all these. So here we have a bunch of different ones. So over here we have some nice basic sparks. Then we have some smoke. We have a nice lightning effect. And then finally we have a bonfire. And again, you can inspect all of the visual effects graph that make up these effects. So for example, over here we can go into the VFX and inspect the smoke graph. And here is the entire effect. As you can see, it's relatively straightforward. We have a simple constant spawn rate. Then we start off with a certain velocity going upwards with a bit of randomization. Then it uses a flipbook texture for the visual. And it also picks a random starting index. Then on update, you can see it applies some force to push it upwards and have some drag. Then it also uses a flipbook player in order to animate the flipbook. And then lastly, down here on the output, it renders the particle, makes it face towards the camera, increases the size over the lifetime increase and decrease the alpha and makes it fade based on proximity to the camera. So you can look at all of the samples and inspect all of the graphs to see how they were made to get an idea of how you can make some really awesome effects. And speaking of awesome effects, there's another sample project with a bunch of really cool effects made using the visual effects graph. You can grab them from the official GitHub page. There's a link in the description. Download that project and when you open it, you'll see this. So this one contains a whole bunch of samples. So here all of them are. There are all some really gorgeous effects. So it contains a demo scene where we can cycle through all of them. So over here we have the Unity logo, it looks really cool. Then we have this mask with some really awesome mesh deformation. Then over here, some butterflies just flying around. There's one with some grass being affected by wind and movement. This one showing off some really cool volumetric lights with tons of particles. Then over here, some really cool portal. And as you can see, it's interacting with the floor. Then this nice animation showing up some nice planets. This one, which is super cool, showing some voxelized terrain. So here, a bunch of options, a bunch of things that you can play around with and looks really awesome. 
just like that. Then the genie, which is the first one that they made, there you go, the genie comes out of the bottle, all the particles moving in, there you go, tons of particles. The spaceship tunnel, this is also one of the coolest ones. The really cool hologram effect with the animated meshes and the effect on the side. A really cool bonfire with some fire, smoke, lights, and so on. Some really nice ribbon animation. And finally, the magic book with the pages being torn, going upwards, and so on and so forth. So this one is actually combining the visual effects ref with the shit graph. So as you can see over here, we have tons of different samples, all of them looking awesome. And again, you can inspect the graphs to see how they were made. So for example, here is the scene with the Unity and logo, and you can inspect the entire graph. So here it is, the entire effect. As you can see, it's a lot more complex, but it also has a whole bunch of sticky notes so you can easily understand how it actually works. So you have tons of samples which showcase the power of this awesome tool. If you'd like to see me go more in depth into how each of these samples work, let me know in the comments. All right, so that's the visual effects graph. It allows you to create awesome effects that render millions of particles to really make your game stand out. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.